Hello! Thank you for clicking that link and joining me again today. I am so glad you did. I don't know why I can't talk. Don't you hate it when you when you go to the gym and you're like, I'm only going to be there an hour and then three hours later you walk out? I do. Actually, my husband does. <laughs> so that also happened to me today. So, all right. So today... We wanted to talk about this article I found. It's from Men's Health, and it's called Dietitians Say This Could Be Why You're Not Losing Weight. So we're going to go ahead and read it together and see if I agree or if I have any tips or anything. Of course, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not anything but a fat chick in a barn. So what do I know? Take my advice with a grain of salt. All right. Now, don't you love this barbell that's like food? I mean, I feel like that's setting this article up for failure. <laughs> so here's my Star Trek drink. Excuse me. All right. Just in case I get purged. Okay. So whopping 45 million Americans diet and spend 33 billion on weight loss products each year, according to the Boston Medical Center. No matter which way you lose weight, dropping the pounds for good comes down to developing a healthy relationship with food and adopting positive, ha uh, ad bleh, positive habits. Okay, first of all, I don't think you have relationship with food. I think you have relationships with people or maybe your pets, family members, I don't think you have a relationship with food. You eat food for energy. It's, you know, the car doesn't have a relationship with gas. <sighs> okay, so moving along. Um, it says, in fact, not losing weight when you've been trying for a while can be extremely frustrating, which is true. Um, and that's why they asked some top dietitians to explain why your diet isn't working and why you're having trouble dropping the pounds. Learn what mistakes you might be making on um, and how to get on a sustainable path to weight loss success. I like I like the word sustainable. You guys know. I'm going to move this. I'm slightly more in the center. Okay. All right. So next, if I can figure out how to navigate this stupid thing. It's one of those slideshow ones that I freaking hate. Okay, so number one, you're focusing too much on the scale. What is your definition of success? And that's a good point, actually. What is your definition of success? I mean, are you trying to lose too much weight? Um, you know, is it is your definition definition of success losing five pounds a week? You know, there's a lot of different, I don't know why I can't talk. Perhaps my brain is fried. It was like day today, so that could be a very, very, you know, real thing. Um, okay, so let's read. So by taking the focus away from weight, a lot of clients find that they can make peace with food and have a better understanding and appreciation for their bodies. Says Wendy Lopez, MS, RD, registered dietitian, certified in diabetes education, and the co founder of Food Heaven Made Easy. The scale can be very anxiety inducing, and sometimes your goal weight is unattainable without dep deprivation and disordered eating. I agree to a point. Because I everything is disordered eating. Now, if you you know, watch what you eat at all, that's considered disordered anymore. So I, I, I don't know. But I do agree that sometimes your goal weight could be unattainable, especially if you've been fat for a long time. Or, you know, if you were going from, you know, like 300 pounds, and you think that you're going to be Chris Hemsworth. My not happen. You might have to embrace that that's not in the cards for you. Just saying. Um, if you're eating better and trending towards more nutrition, nutritional choices, nutritious, I don't know why I can't talk, uh, you'll probably feel the results much quicker and you'll see them on the, or then you'll see them on the scale. 
I mean, I think that we should be eating healthier. You know, I'm not sure about this because I tried this and I didn't lose any weight. And I'm pretty sure that my body doesn't need to be, you know, still quite obese. So, yeah, I, I, I partially agree. Uh, tune into your mood, sleep, digestion, energy, and fitness performance first. Eh. But most of us are walking. Most of us are starting out with walking. We, we're not really trying to have fitness performance. We're just trying to lose weight. So, yeah. And non-scale factors make a big difference in your quality of life. Yeah, that's true. And I do think that we need to pay more attention on sleep. You know, like what foods cause us to, you know, feel crappy. You know, this way an elimination diet would be good. Uh, let's move on because this video is going to be hella long because there's 16 slides. So you're getting healthier without realizing it. Well, yeah, you probably are, but the scale doesn't lie. You're still overeating if you're not losing. Uh, some of the strongest athletes are classified as overweight or obese. Uh, on the BMI scale, which, yeah, that's true, but most of us aren't athletes. That's, I think that's misleading, but most of us are not athletes. Most of us are just, you know, regular old people trying to lose some weight and get in shape. That way, you know, we can move when we're 75 without a walker or, you know, I'll make it to 75 because a lot of the people in the um, health at any size movement aren't going to make it that long because they are so morbidly obese. Okay. With a lifestyle change that includes a different eating strategy and more strength workouts, the reason you're not losing weight might be simple. You may be putting on muscle. Oh, this one triggers me. This one triggers me because this is a lie. This is somebody trying to make you feel better. This is that, that I've talked about this before when they're like, Oh, but you're putting on muscle. Bullshit. Bullshit. Maybe a week. Maybe you might not lose for a week, but you can't sit there for like a month, six months, eight months going, but I'm putting on all this muscle. No, that's bullshit. You're overeating and you're not losing weight. Scale doesn't lie. People do. So I disagree with you, sir or ma'am. I don't know what you are. Oh, Barry. Uh, I don't know. Um, for overall wellness. For an overall wellness win, strive for more muscle versus lower pounds. Well, you can do both. And I highly, I highly suggest that you weight train um, while trying to lose weight. I highly suggest that you do. Uh, like I said in another video, you know, muscle actually burns more calories just sitting there than fat does. So it's more ideal to have muscle. Um, so I, I strongly suggest you weight train and lift heavy, even if you're a woman or a man or whatever in between. Um, do, 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 do. I'm, I'm going to skip this. And, oh, actually, I'm not going to skip this because it talks about women over age 40. And in one report, um, women from like, was it age 55 to 65 couldn't lift over 10 pounds because as we age, we lose muscle mass. So that's one reason weight training is super duper important. Plus lifting heavy stuff, doing like squats and deadlifts and stuff like that actually increases your bone density. So that's a good thing too. Next, your motivation starts with shame. <sighs> Well, I agree that your motivation should be positive based. Shame can get you started, you know, or, or, um, the feeling of getting back at an ex can get you started on the path. I don't think that you can keep that. You can't maintain that, you know, but I think it can definitely get you started on the path. So I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, but I do think that eventually you are going to have to be positive and you are going to have to say, I want to lose this weight for me, uh, you know, because I want to walk when I'm 70 or whatever your reasons are other than I hate myself. Um, that can get you in the door, but I don't think that's going to get you very far. Let's see. Next slide goes. Is this one of them? No. 
Next one. You're setting a dead person's goal. I like this one. Speaking of goals, or er, speaking of goals, are yours reasonable? Instead of saying, I'll never eat chocolate again, which they're calling a dead person's goal, you know, set some other goal, like I want to enjoy chocolate or whatever, three times a week. Some people can get away with doing it every day. Like for me, that's a trigger food, so I can't have it just lying around. Like if I'm out and about, maybe I can have chocolate, but you know, or like for dessert at a restaurant or something, but I just can't have it laying around my house. Some people can, but yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, you can't just be like, I'm never going to eat bread again, because if you truly love bread or chocolate or whatever, you are going to eat it again. You just need to set up some goals surrounding that, or maybe do it in a controlled way. You know, like, like I said, when I'm out and about, I might allow myself a chocolate bar. I do not keep it in my house. Unfortunately, it gets brought in sometimes, so I have to deal with that. But yeah, some set, set up some goals around that. And it's hard when they're like, oh, if I have a birthday party, you know, I'm just going to have three bites and then pass on the rest. That's hard. That can be a trigger. So watch out. And it's okay if you make mistakes, just try to learn from them, which is where I'm kind of at. Okay. You're on a fuel roller coaster. Feeling hungry every so often is fine, but starving yourself won't help you lose weight. It just sets you up for overeating when you do finally dig in. So don't skip meals. Uh, I think some people can get away with intermittent fasting, uh, but some people can't. I've done it. I don't really like it, so I don't really do it. Um, you know, if I'm not feeling it, then I won't eat, but whatever. But I like this. S add a snack or two, such as a serving of almonds. Well, a serving of almonds is like 160 calories. So, you know, depending, you may not want a serving of almonds, but, you know, you might want something different, you know. Yes, and I do agree. Make small changes such as cutting back on added sugars and saturated fat, increasing fiber. Those are good things. Um, I think you should... As Alan Roberts says, treat sugar like you do alcohol, you know, consume it sparingly. All right. So you're trying to do too much too soon. This, this is possible. Let's see what they say. Uh, it's probably clear now that you don't have and shouldn't cut out all carbs or eating only during a six hour window of time. If your diet is to be a lifelong change, you should also expect to shed 15, shouldn't, shouldn't expect to shed 15 pounds in one week, which is true. If you are not super morbidly obese, five pounds is a lot. You're probably going to be going with 0.5 to two pounds a week, that kind of thing. Uh, let's see, extreme re restriction on the type of food, how much and when to start eating may inadvertently result in excess calorie consumption. Which I agree, um, you have to be careful with that because if you skip meals, you can, you know, have ghrelin, you know, come out and, you know, cause you to overeat. You know, you would need to stretch your stomach and have the leptin response, which, you know, you can do that with drinking water. A lot of water usually, <laughs> but yeah, you could do that. But I think you should find a sustainable eating plan and do that and not restrict your calories or things that you eat. Um, I mean, this is useful, useful, you know, drink one less soda per day or switch to diet. Um, at 10 minutes extra of cardio to your workout three times each week. I wouldn't do that. You know, if you start out doing like 30 minute, a 30 minute walk, I would do that for a month, maybe two, and then add like five minutes, you know, just real gradual. And, you know, you want to do the minimum viable dose to be effective. So if 30 minutes, walking 30 minutes a day is getting you there, then don't change it. Hello. Hi, Ethel. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, 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 hi.
It's an ugly monster. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> what are you doing? All right, uh, drink your coffee black instead of, <laughs> hi, <laughs> hi. Oh, you're gonna kill everything here. <laughs> Let me put this up here. I'm sorry if the mic changed. The dog mobbed me and probably messed up the mic, so. Okay, uh, drink your coffee black instead of adding cream and sugar, I agree. Put Splenda in it. Um, I usually put a little tiny dribble of milk in my coffee, which I think is fine. If you have, you know, don't put heaping, you know, making your coffee almost white. Don't do that. Um, use half as much dressing on your salad. Honestly, I don't even use dressing on my salad. Uh, you would be shocked. If you'd be shocked if you look at how many calories are in, in uh, salad dressing. So if I use it, I use like half a serving with just like a tablespoon. So yeah, I do agree. Dieters are always looking for the fastest and easiest ways to lose weight. And then for some reason they lose that weight and maintain it for a few days and then regain that weight. And I would say that's probably because they're restricting too many calories. Um, really, all you got to do is, that's why I'm like historical data, get your historical data. And if you're eating, you know, 3000 calories a day, just slop off 200 calories. And, you know, that, that you won't even miss those calories. What's that like, like a soda, a soda and a half, because a soda I think is 150 calories. Um, some Starbucks drinks, that kind of stuff. Uh oh. Hi! 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 Hello! I'm getting mauled by the dog! I'm not sure what's up with Ethel. I think she just wants to play. Anyway! Wait, hey, hey, we got stuff to do here. Uh, I do think dieters are often trying to lose weight fast. You know, they're like, oh, hey, my sister's brother's cousin's mother's wedding is in two weeks. Can I lose 10 pounds? Um, no, don't even try. <laughs> no, I mean, maybe if you started on keto and lost a bunch of water, you could make it, but that's not a sustainable change if that was what your goal was. Ooh, okay. Building an, un <clears throat> you're building an unhealthy relationship with food. Again, I don't think you have a relationship with food. I think that you have relationships with people. Uh, the most sustainable strategy starts with focus on what's going on in your mind. I totally agree. Not what's going on on your menu. I totally agree. Uh, give yourself permission to undiet is the first step to a healthier relationship with food. I, I think what you would want to do is you'd want to analyze your diet, you know, go to the TDEE calculator you know, see how many calories it says that you should be eating, you know, and like I said, maybe you want to go ahead and just lop off the, you know, the top 200 calories for like 10 to 30 pounds. I mean, if you drop down to 30 pounds, then lop off another 200 calories. Again, this is like with the, the working out thing, minimal, minimum viable dosage to be effective. So you want to eat as much as you can. You are going to have to be in a caloric restriction, but you want to eat as much as you can. So you don't want to be like, oh, okay, well, I've been eating 3,000 calories a day for month, you know, for like the whole fucking life. And then, oh, I'm just going to eat 1,200 calories now. Now that is setting yourself up for failure. You might be able to do it for a week, two weeks, maybe a month. But at some point, you're going to be like, everybody's fucking eating cake and I'm eating a salad. I'm over this and you're going to start eating again. So it's a lot better if you just lop off 200 calories, you know, maybe lop off 500 calories off the top, you know, that kind of thing. That's going to be easier on you and won't be as stressful. Let's see. I have a sweet tooth, but rather than avoiding my sweet cravings, I face them head on. Enjoying some chocolate every night helps to curb my sweet tooth when uh, presented with more indulgent options. 
So, like I said, you might be able to get away with this. I can't get away with this. I can't have chocolate in the house. And knowing your limitations is also helpful. It's something you should do. Like, keep the Oreos out. Like, I can't have Oreos in the house because I will eat all of the Oreos. You just need to notice your limitations. Stick with it. Uh, I'm going to skip to the next one. You're eating too little fiber. Uh, maybe you're well. What they're saying here, what the way I would interpret this, interpretate the way I would interpret this is that you are not feeling satiated. So what you would want to do is maybe eat more lean meats. Of course, eat more vegetables because vegetables are free calories. You don't have to count vegetables. I don't count vegetables. I, you know, you can eat a ton. You can eat a gigantic bowl of salad. You can get one of those frozen steamer bags of, uh, what do you call them, Brussels sprouts and eat the whole thing. And that's like four servings. You can eat the whole thing, you know? <laughs> so eat the whole bag. You'll feel satiated. Drink some water. That's what they're saying here. It's not really that you're getting too little fiber. And especially if you eat vegetables, you're going to get lots of fiber. So you should be eating three servings of vegetables a day, two fruits. Uh, and I'm not really sure about the other stuff. Sorry. Like I said, I'm not a dietitian, but what I try to do is just get a little protein, a little veg, a little fiber in every meal. You know, that's all I try to do. I'm not an athlete. I'm not trying to increase my performance. And most likely you aren't either. I mean, I would be shocked as shit if there was like a bodybuilder watching my video. <laughs> uh, I watch their videos, but I'm pretty sure they don't watch my video. Um, let's see. Next. Oh, you're surrounded by food pushers. Oh, yes. I like this one. Well, I like the title anyway. Birthdays, retirements, bagel Fridays, a pound if you work in an office environment. Well, that's pre-COVID. Uh, in fact, the average person consumes 1,277 calories. Wow. Each week by way of free work snacks. Are you all work in call centers? Seriously? According to the report from the CDC. Really? That's rich CDC. Uh-huh. All right. And that adds up to an extra pound every three weeks or a bonus 17 pounds for the year. Once you set a get fit goal, place a visible reminder on your desk. I agree. Uh, then share your wishes with your pal. I wouldn't. Because it's not their responsibility. It's not their responsibility. Like, I can see what they're saying. If you want to split a bagel or something with your buddy, that's cool. But you don't want to be the person who can eat the donut and not gain weight. You want to be the person that's not eating the donut. You know, you don't want to be eating bagels and crap like that. You know, like the the uh, leftovers from the meeting when they bring out all the, you know, all the those lovely bagels, cream cheese and all that stuff. Don't eat that stuff. Just avoid it um, if you can. Uh, yeah, split it with a buddy, but better to avoid it. You know, as uh, Pop Solio would say, don't eat dirty dicks. Uh, let's see. You could find a friend or a coworker to be your ally and hold you accountable. Um, that's good to have a support system. Uh, I question your office buddy about that. I don't know. I. I don't know if I have any office buddies that would help me. You're suffering from portion distortion. Are you overloading on that avocado toast? That's, I would say, more so that you don't know how many calories are in things. You should probably look that up. You can Google it or you can get the Calorie King book like I have. Or you can use Chronometer. You can spark people. You can use Fitness Pal apps to figure that kind of stuff out. Just because it's considered healthy food doesn't mean you can eat as much as you want. Well, you can if it's like Brussels sprouts and broccoli and cauliflower and stuff like that. Avocados are very fattening or very fatty. They're good for you. They definitely are, but I wouldn't eat a ton. I don't really like them anyway, but. And I'd rather eat, you know, you, you should probably rather eat an avocado than guacamole because it's been adulterated, so to speak. 
Um, while measuring food prepared home, at least in the beginning, it's a solid place to start according to fine. Restaurants and cookbook portions are likely larger per the analysis on the current obesity reports. Um, when you're presented with a double size portion, you consume 35% more calories than a standard size. And ask for a box when your meal arrives at the restaurant and box it up. Uh, what goes beyond the portion that fits your eating plan? I agree. Um, you can ask for if it's hard for you to like eat or not to eat. Let me try this again. If, it, if it's hard for you to like eat half and leave half, then yeah, I would say get a box at the beginning of the meal, box it up, you know. All right, next. You're eating too many diet foods. All right, well, on this, I agree. You shouldn't be eating diet foods. You should be trying to eat whole foods, lean meats, you know, lots of vegetables, that kind of stuff. You shouldn't be like buying the diet potato chips or the diet salad dressing or the whatever, because that stuff's usually really processed and not even remotely natural. Um, I do like to stick to the adage of if it had a mother or came from the earth, you can eat it. Um, most diet foods, you know, I don't think look that way. I mean, they, they say ice cream here. I am not really an ice cream eater. I will tell you that. But you can go to Greg Doucette's channel and get a recipe for anabolic protein ice cream, which is pretty good. I've made it. It's tasty. You know, or you can get Halo Top or something like that. But yeah, you probably want to steer clear of quote unquote diet foods. Um, you're not, here's this one, you're not giving yourself kudos off for the small wins. Um, I, I kind of agree with this because um, that's one of the things I think you should kind of focus on is uh, what I call or what is called non-scale victories, NSV. So, you know, like your rings fitting when they didn't fit, shoes fitting when they didn't fit, people noticing, you know, that you've lost weight write these things down, review them daily so that you're like, oh, okay, it was worth it. People are noticing and, and you remember that, hopefully that good feeling you felt when somebody compliments you. And the next one, you're eating your feelings. Well, eh. respond, don't react to your emotions. Even the most balanced person you know experiences stress. What makes us all different is how we respond to it. Responding means deciding what you want to do, like planning your indulgences. Reacting is instantaneous. You might do something you'll regret, like downing a pint of ice cream without thinking about how you'll feel afterward. Um, and I think this the behavioral cognitive therapy comes in here where you kind of are reading your reminder cards saying, hey, you know, this is an option I would do when I'm stressed instead of eating a pint of ice cream or whatever, or go get some, make some protein ice cream because that stuff will fill you up. All right. And next, your salad is overloaded. Yes, this is a huge mistake. Just putting all kinds of crap on your salad. You know, when you start putting, you know, um, Cheese, like they're saying here, cheers, cheers, cheese, bacon, croutons, nuts, and drowning in salad dressing and all that kind of stuff. Your salad may very well end up being like 700 calories when maybe you thought it was 200 kind of thing. So yeah, you got to watch out for that stuff. And your DNA, your DNA is working against you. Okay. Uh, hang on here. There are so many complicated factors that influence someone's natural weight range. I think this is getting into stuff that triggers me territory. And the body works hard to defend a certain set point. Now, how much weight someone loses and keeps off is more uh, influenced by, bio by biology than a personal choice. No. I think this is bollocks. I think that our weight, um, 
the weight that we carry and stuff like that, I think is highly influenced by our environment. I really do because I was plateaued at 190 pounds. You're telling me that 190 pounds was my set point that my body wanted to be like barely below morbidly obese. Really? Really? I don't think so. I think yes, how much we weigh is influenced. Like, I, like I was saying by our environment, because you know, you can't walk out your front door if you live in a city without there being a McDonald's, a Starbucks, an Arby's, or a, you know, KFC or Taco Bell right there. You know, you can just walk over there and get, oh, I'm going to get mauled again. You can't just, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Why are you biting me? Why are you biting me? Do you want to play? I know. We'll play. We'll play in a minute. Hi. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, try not to knock everything down. <laughs> Ethel. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, yeah. Arby's, KFC, whatever. Um, and that was, that was a lot of my problem. Because when I left the house, I developed this stupid idea. Sorry, sorry, you gotta watch the dog, make sure she's not getting into things. I developed this stupid idea that, like, I would, I would leave the house to go to work, to go to my lessons, um, whatever. And I would go, I'd stop at Starbucks, you know, and get a Java chip frappuccino because that's my jam. I would get that, you know, or if I was going up to the, excuse me, um, up to the Irish Cultural Center, I would stop at Fair Trade and try to give them my business and get some crack cookie, what we called crack cookies, which was no bake um, peanut butter chocolate chip cookies or and, and a coffee or a chai tea or something like that from up there. You know, every time I left, like when I left my my bagpipe lesson, I would stop at McDonald's and get three cookies on the way home, you know, or if I had a hankering for it, I would stop by Jack in the Box and get an Oreo cookie shake and bacon ch cheddar sour cream potato wedges, which ironically was in the same parking lot as the LA Fitness I used to go to. But yeah, so I got to the point where whenever I left the house, I went to fast food and got something because it was my treat for adulting, you know, and that's I think a huge problem and, and influences it. Like if I walk down my front, like right now, when I walk out my front door, there's nothing. I mean, I can go to the garden and pick a tomato or, or 10, you know, and eat that. But it's not the same as, oh, I'm just walking out my front door and going to Starbucks, you know, because of how I live in the country. You know, it's just, it's just different. And I think we're conditioned, you know, to think that, it's okay. Like, what I noticed, like, when I started being like, I need a therapist because I don't know what's wrong with me, is I went to the grocery store to, you know, get groceries. But as I was leaving, you know, how they have the, the snack food and everything right there by the cash register, I was so focused on which candy bar I was going to get that I couldn't even hear the, the checker ask me for my credit card or, you know, the, the, the discount card or whatever for the store. I do. I didn't even hear that. I was so focused on, you know, do I want Reese's? Do I want M&M's? You know, and that's when I was like, okay, I think I might need some mental help because I have freaking lost it. And we're, I think we're conditioned that way, especially here in America. You know, I can't speak for other countries. I like I can when I visited Sweden, I felt like we ate much more healthy when we ate at the people, you know, our get our. Um, our. Um, our host, that's what they're called. I felt we ate much more healthy when we were at our host's house. You know, we had, we cooked up meat every night and had vegetables and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, as an odd treat, we would have um, basically what we would call in America cheesy poofs or, you know, puffed cheese, whatever's, um, 
you know, we would do that kind of, you know, some of those, but I think we probably ate more healthy. And maybe that was just isolated because I know when I talk about Sweden, people are like, you're an idiot. <laughs> what, when comment I got on one of my Sweden video was, what? Why would anyone care what a fat lesbian thinks about Sweden? So that was, I loved that one. That was good. Um, but yeah, I think here in America, we're conditioned to eat fast food. I mean, look, when we had COVID, we had, um, you know, restaurants were considered essential because people don't know how to cook for themselves. So, all right. With that, because now this video is really long. <laughs> um, yeah. Air hugs. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Have a good night.